Hey! Welcome back to R for Statistics and Data Science. Before we begin, I just wanted to say thanks for sticking around. Also, well done on keeping such good pace. You really are making gigantic strides and already know a ton of stuff about R. Because this lesson is about data frames, one of R's best structures for dealing with sets of data, let's recap the data structures we have covered so far. You know about vectors, which is the first structure we covered, and you also know about vectors to dimensional extensions, matrices. You are comfortable with subsetting and doing basic operations with both. You have learned about lists, R as a way to store tree or hierarchical data, and you know how to access elements from a list. Not bad at all. And now, to the main dish, data frames. The common limitation of vectors and matrices is that they can only store elements of a single type. If we try to assign objects of different kinds to either, R's coercion rules take place. That's inconvenient for storing any type of real data, which often include both numeric and string variables. Using lists is equally suboptimal. Lists are a cumbersome structure, as we saw in the previous section, which makes them extremely difficult to work with directly. Therefore, data frames are our only hope. Think of data frames as an Excel spreadsheet. They store different types of data simultaneously in a very functional way. Although the format of a data frame is a two-dimensional table, which looks a lot like a matrix, data frames are actually lists. They combine vectors of the same length into the columns of a table. Data types can differ between columns, but not within columns. That said, a row can be constructed by cells with different data types, but columns can only contain cells of one type. It is very, very unlikely that you will ever need to create a data frame manually in your day-to-day -day work. Data is usually imported into R from other files like text, Excel, the web, and so on. We will learn how to import datasets into R in the next couple of lessons. As for now, let's learn how to create them ourselves. To create a data frame, you need two things. Vectors of equal length to bind into the columns of a table, and the data frame function. For my data frame, I will create four vectors, one with movie titles, one with year of release, one with length in minutes, and one with box office grossings. As you can notice, some of these are character vectors and others are integers. So let's jam them into a data frame. Okay, there are a few things to notice. First, data.frame binds the vectors as columns and infers that the names of the vector corresponds to the column names. That's pretty useful in most cases, but in case you want to rename your columns, you can do it as we have been doing it so far, with the names function, like this. Or you could assign the names directly when creating the data frame, like this. Sweet! Okay, of course, you could also assign row names, but with large datasets, that is not super convenient and is generally advised against. If you do insist on doing it, however, you can use the row.names argument in the function. In fact, you know what? If you want to know more about data.frames arguments and usage, just call help on it and have a quick browse. Okay, another thing to notice is that when we call the str function on our data frame like that, it looks a lot like a list structure. And it should, because like we said earlier, data frames are just two-dimensional versions of the list. Now, look closer at the movie title variable. R has stored it as a factor. Remember when I told you that factors come into play often in R? 
Well, this is one instance of it. If you don't want R to store your character variables as factors, you should specifically tell it not to do so by setting the strings as factors argument to false. Like this. All right. Awesome. Well, that's it for this lesson, everyone. Next, we will look at the tidyverse package. And after that, we'll go on to importing data into our studio. Both of those things are going to be very, very useful further on because you will primarily be importing data for most of your projects and you'll be using the tidyverse as you're doing your daily analysis. See you then. Thanks for watching. And again, may the code be with you. For more videos like this one, please subscribe.